state. And here we only have four set of quantum numbers. What's important is the first three quantum numbers in the set, namely the principal quantum number n. Now this n is the same n that we talked about in that last equation that I need you to memorize for the first uh, learning objective. E n equals to negative R H C over n squared. And the principal quantum number. Okay. The principal quantum number is an integer. It starts with a value of 1. So n equals 1 or 2 or 3 and go up and theoretically and go all the way to infinity. Okay. And the principal quantum number de determines the main energy level. Okay. So n is directly associated, associated with how much energy that particular electron has. And then within each n, there is more, there are more than one sublevels, and we call it the orbital angular momentum quantum number. We use an italicized L to represent that quantity. Now there is a relationship between n and L. Okay. N, n start with one integer number. They start with one. Okay. L start with zero. And L will go all the way up to n minus 1. So if n equals 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. When n equals 1, there is only one possible value for L. It'll be 0. If n equals to 2, L could be 0. L could be 2 minus 1, 1. So there are two possible values for L. So if n equals to 3, there are three possible values for L. Those three values are 0, 1, and 2. 2 equals to 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 equals to 2. Okay? So that's a relationship there. So basically, the L determines how many rooms that you have in a particular, uh, how many uh, sublevels. Uh, assuming you're building uh, a, uh, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're building a, a, a house there. So you have your first floor, second floor, and third floor. So this is L is really like how many floors you have in that building there, in that house there. Okay. And, uh, and, and then the third quantum number is M sub L. You use the uh, subscript, uh, it has the L as a subscript there. And M L is the magnetic quantum number. It has something to do with the number of orbitals here. Now, ML has values of 0, positive 1, negative 1, positive 2, negative 2. So ML could be 0, could be negative, could be positive. But ML also has a relationship with L. ML will take the value if you have L equal to 0. Okay. ML can only be 0. But if L equals to 1, ML would have three values. Negative one, positive one, zero. If ML, if L equal to two, you have five possible values for ML. I'll be negative two, negative one, two values, zero, three, one, and two. And as you guessed, if L equal to three, there are seven values associated with the ML. Negative three all the way to positive three, including zero, integer number. Okay, so that's the magnetic quantum number. Then the last one is what we call the electron spin quantum number. There are only two values associated with the MS. Okay, MS, the electron spin quantum number, it's either positive one of two or negative one of two. This number here, I'll do not treat it as one half. Well, it looks like it's one half, positive one half, negative one half. Well, MS has two possibilities. Positive is one of them. Negative is the other. Okay, so those are the two possibilities there. Now, what does this quantum number stand for? Well, it stands for if you put two electrons in the same orbit, in, in the same orbital there, okay, now those two electrons will have to spin to the opposite direction. Just like when you put two people in the same room there, each person needs their own elbow space and you just don't want to squeeze them too close to one another. So the electrons are the same. Well, people are the same way as the electrons. That should be a more proper um, uh, statement there, because we are all made of protons and electrons and, and, and neutrons and all that. Okay. So if you have two electrons in the same orbital, 
there would they have to spin on the opposite direction. So that is what this number is all about. The first three quantum number, however, determines where the electron is. The last quantum number differentiates the two electrons that are in the same room. One is going to be positive one of two, the other will have to be negative. A positive and negative refers to the electron spin direction. And by convention, counterclockwise spinning is defined as positive, and clockwise spinning is defined as negative. Now these days, and the term clockwise, counterclockwise may no longer make sense, because when you look at your clock, it's all digital. Now, that's clockwise, that's counterclockwise. Okay, to the left, to the right. So these are the four quantum numbers that we need to use if we try to describe a particular electron. Now, no two electrons in any atom will have identical set of four quantum numbers. That's the first thing I need you to remember. Okay? Now, two electrons may have, there are two electrons in each atom here, and they may have the first three quantum numbers identical. The last one is going to be different. The last one is going to be different. The last one is going to be, for those two electrons, one of them is positive, one of two, the other has to be negative. They are spinning on the opposite direction here. So with the set of four quantum numbers there, each electron in atoms of any given element has a unique set of quantum numbers. And that's, well, that's how we need to reach you by mail if we need to send you something. When you get into the house there, you have to put the name, your name, on the envelope. So when you have multiple members in the family there, and that mail is intended for this particular person. You have the name in there not along, with the, uh, with, along with the address there. Okay, so very much similar to that. Th this is how we identify, and this is how we locate, if you will, the electron, the, the exact location of the electron there. So again, a summary about the quantum numbers and electron orbitals there. Um, this particular slide only lists the first three quantum numbers. The last one is easy, because if you identify the first three quantum numbers, you can put up to two electrons there, and those two electrons will have the identical first three quantum number, but the last quantum number, electron spin quantum number, is going to be different, either positive one of two or negative one of two. So quantum, principal quantum number is n. n equals one, two, three, four, just like that, that steps on that ladder there. Energy, uh, energy level. Okay. If n is a higher number, uh, that means that electron, if n for the electron is a higher number compared to, the, to another electron there, that means that particular electron has higher energy. So electrons on n equals to 1 has lower energy than the electrons on n equals to 2 or 3 or 4. Okay. So n is the lowest uh, quantum number and the smallest quantum number at an integer there. And the, n, uh, the electron on n equals to 1 shell has the lowest energy. Anything above that shell uh, will have, the electrons will have more energy there. So n principal quantum number has something to do with the main energy. It's the main energy level. It has something to do with the total energy of the electron there. Angular momentum quantum number L um, is the subshell. Within each shell, you may have two or three or five different subshells there. Okay, so L represents the subshell. And then L start with zero. L go all the way up. L goes all the way up to n minus one. So if n equals one, there is only one possibility for L, zero. If n equals to two, zero 